What I want to say is that anyone who anyone who thinks that women are out there reporting, you know, doing false reports of rape, needs to ask the woman closest to them in their lives about this. Ask a woman that you know if she would do that, or if she thinks that other women would do that, and you will get the answer: no. He's Brian Banks, the high school football star, whose life was derailed when he was convicted of rape, a rape he didn't commit. And this is the private eye who helped him get a second chance by getting the confession that exonerated him, setting him free. Well, tonight, the inside story of how Brian Banks got his accuser to admit on hidden camera that she lied about his raping her. Tonight, the I-Team's Joel Grover joins us with this exclusive story. Joel, it's just remarkable. It absolutely is. And the man you're about to meet has so far stayed out of the limelight. But tonight, that's about to change. Now, Private Eye Freddie Parrish is telling the NBC4 I-Team how this amazing undercover sting went down that helped make Brian Banks a free man. I did not know nothing about that. Though. You're watching never-before-aired video of Juanetta Gibson and Brian Banks in the minutes before her stunning confession that she lied when she said the high school football star raped her 10 years ago. This camera right here was in a plant. This is the man who helped Banks get the now famous confession on hidden camera, private investigator Freddie Parrish. There's only one chance to get the the goods. I mean, you've got to make it right the first time. Parrish's son played football with Brian Banks at Long Beach Polytechnic High in 2002, oh, the time here. Juanetta Gibson made her false rape accusation. Gibson's family got a million and a half dollar settlement from the school district, and Banks got five years in prison and five more on parole, shackled with an ankle monitor. So I know I'm not behind bars, and I know I'm not locked up right now but I'm still very much incarcerated. Then last year, Brian Banks got a Facebook friend request from Juanetta Gibson. Mr. Banks called my son, Freddie, and asked him, what should I do? My son naturally says, hey, you gotta call my dad, he'll help you with this. Once I was able to read the case, there was no doubt in my mind that this young man was innocent. Parrish devised a plan to clear Brian Banks' name. He wired his office. We had a pin like this. With hidden cameras. sitting in this pin holder and with microphones we had put the audio device in that tree right there behind him. We saw the private Gibson. eye suggested banks first invite gibson to his office for a friendly chat about their past all the shows, everything. brian banks asks gibson for help in clearing his name i'll go through with helping you but but she's afraid of losing all that money from her settlement all that money they gave us i mean gave me right. i don't want to have to pay it back all that because that right. will take a long time. Now comes the hard part. Banks had to convince Gibson to come back the next day and talk to the private eye who was helping free him. I needed to get her to basically recant everything that she said that Brian did 10 years ago. If I let this man down, I would have to live with that the rest of my life. Hey, buddy. The mood in the room was light, but Investigator Parrish's questioning got heavy. When did you encourage it? Yeah, was it after him, before him? After. Now the big question. Did he break you? No, he did not break you. Did he kidnap you? No. When she said those things, what did you say to yourself? Wow. <laughs> I got it. It was the key evidence that Banks' lawyers from the California Innocence Project needed to go back to court. And that undercover video got Brian Banks' rape conviction thrown out. Banks' lawyer, Justin Brooks. Well, the videotape is a slam dunk in the sense that she's recanting her testimony. She's specifically saying that he did not rape her. Parrish has had big celebrity cases and well-known clients. But this assignment had a different kind of payoff. Now, I had an opportunity to make a difference in a man's life. And finally, what about Juanetta Gibson, who got all that settlement money after making a false accusation? We asked the DA's office and the school district if they planned to try and recover it. They wouldn't comment. But Banks' lawyer and private eye say most of that million and a half dollar settlement has probably been spent. You know, in fact, Joel, a lot of the uh, neighbors and even some um, friends have come forward saying that money was spent left and right and on a lot of things, including cars, a lot of cars. It is thought that she's gone through or her family has gone through most of that money. In fact, when she showed up for that meeting, 
She took a bus, didn't mm. even have a car to drive. 28-year-old Atlanta Falcon linebacker rookie Brian Banks is one step closer to making his dream a reality after taking to the gridiron against the Cincinnati Bengals this week. Nice job getting off a block and making a play. It's still one of those situations where, like, you know, it happened. But, like, now it's just replaying in my head. But this is no ordinary rookie. Banks joined the Falcons after spending five years in jail and five on parole. Why? He was wrongly convicted of raping a high school classmate. In May 2012, justice was served. The verdict for Banks overturned the new ruling, not guilty. The people's motion to dismiss this case pursuant to Section 1385. I may not ever get the answers as to why I was supposed to go through what I went through, but I know that I'm here today and I remain unbroken. In 2002, Banks was a junior at Long Beach Poly High, a football standout, and signed a letter of intent with Southern Cal when Juanetta Gibson accused him of sexually assaulting her. The Long Beach Unified School District settled a suit with Gibson on her claim that school security was lax when she was attacked. Banks spent more than five years in prison before she recanted. The school district now has sued Gibson for $2 million, never to recoup what she was paid, plus attorney's fees and punitive damages. In a statement, the school district says it has also urged the L.A. County District Attorney to pursue criminal charges against Gibson. The absolutely most credible study of this uh, that has been done estimates that between 2% and 10% of rape, rape allegations are false. And even some of those are, you know, borderline. So the, the idea that, that women make this stuff up right. is, is a pernicious myth.